Today, we're going to be learning how to use canvases in Daz Studio to help speed up your renders. Canvases are images that have special information that help you do post work and stuff like After Effects or Photoshop. In the example that you see here, I use canvases to isolate separate light layers and add fog effects in a fast and efficient way. I was also able to render the background as a single image while animating only the small area that contains the character. The fire was animated in separate software and brought into the video in After Effects. I have a separate scene here set up to show you how canvases work just because this one renders a little bit faster. Canvases in iRay are part of your iRay render settings. When you click on your render settings tab, you'll notice three more tabs at the top and one of them is labeled advanced. In the advanced settings, you'll see an additional three tabs, one of which is labeled canvases. Inside of the canvas menu, you'll see this blank space, which is where we'll start adding our canvas layers. To do this, the first thing you need to do is check this box to enable canvases. Once they are enabled, you can click the plus or minus buttons to add or remove canvases to your layers. After adding your first canvas, you'll notice that it comes with some settings down at the bottom. This is where you'll be able to change the type of the canvas that you want to render, as well as the name of the canvas that you're rendering. When you add a new canvas to your scene by default, it will load as a beauty layer. This is basically the render as you see it in Daz Studio, but rendered in an HDR format that is easier for editing. You can add more canvases to your list by clicking the plus icon again. By adding multiple canvases and setting them to different types, you can get a lot of information from a single render. I'm going to speed through and add one layer of each type so that we can see what they do. I'll be able to explain them in more detail as we start rendering. When adding canvases, you may notice these two down at the bottom that are marked for interactive mode only. Since we're using photoreal mode for iRay on this render, I won't be looking into these, but they might be worth investigating for your renders. If you ever have a canvas that you want to get rid of, like this beauty pass that I added, just hit the minus button and it will remove it. One of the canvases that we added is called light group, and there's some special settings for this one that I want to set up. The light group canvas basically allows you to isolate separate lighting effects in your scene. To do this, you have to tell it which lights that you want to be isolated, and we do this by using the nodes dropdown. Nodes are basically groups of objects in your scene that canvases can use to address things separately. To create a new node, first we have to select the objects in our scene that we want to be included. I'm going to be using these sphere mesh lights that are used for the lamps that are hanging from the ceiling. This will give me a separate render that contains all the light just from the lamps and not from things like the environment lighting. So once you have all of your lights selected, we can go back to the canvas tab and add it to a new node group. Clicking on the node dropdown will give you an option to create from selection, and this will bring up a dialog box allowing you to name the new node group. After giving it a name and hitting enter, we'll have a new node group that's made up of all the things that we had selected in our scene. If you ever need to edit what's inside of this node group, you can click this button and it will bring up a separate menu. From here, you can use the checkboxes to indicate what you do and don't want included. Now that we've set up all of our canvases, we can start rendering. There's nothing special for this part. You can just hit the render button like you would any other render. Once our scene loads and starts rendering, it won't look like anything special is going on. Currently, it's showing you the beauty pass canvas, which is just what your render would look like normally. If we want to change the canvas that's currently being previewed, we have to do so by opening up this secret little menu that's over on the left side. If you mouse over the left side of the render view, you can find this small tab. Clicking it will bring up a menu that looks similar to your render settings. This menu here will let you adjust some settings while your render is going. For what we want to do, we have to scroll all the way down to the bottom, where we'll find a dropdown that's specific to canvases. This active canvas dropdown is what specifies what canvas to show you in the render view. When you click on this dropdown, it'll give you a list of all of the canvases that we've created, and it'll let you select which canvas you want to be previewed. Switching back and forth between canvases can give you an idea of what exactly is going on. Canvas 2 happens to be our diffuse canvas, so we're losing stuff like refraction. Your diffuse canvas is basically what your render would look like without any sort of reflections or refractions. All of our reflections are actually split up between two canvases called specular and glossy. You can see what those look like by selecting canvas number three and canvas number four. Canvas number five is set up for emission surfaces like mesh lights, but since all of our mesh lights are behind glass in the lamps, we won't actually see anything here. To see the light being cast by our mesh lights, we have to go to canvas six, which is that light group that we set up earlier.
This is basically giving you a render of our scene the way it would look if it were only lit by our lamps. Switching to Canvas 7, you can see our environment lighting, which is an HDRI that I have in the background. The environment lighting canvas is also where you would find your sun and sky lighting if you were using that instead of an HDRI. Canvas 8 is our alpha canvas, but it's just rendering black because we don't have any background to mask out. Usually you would use this to mask out a character that's standing in front of an HDRI background. Canvas number 9 is called LPE, which to my knowledge just renders the same as a beauty pass. Canvas number 10 is our normal canvas, which is rendering out a normal map of our scene. For some reason, this renders out black in the render view, but works properly when you open the file in Photoshop. Canvas number 11 is our depth pass, and number 12 is our distance pass. Like the normal map pass, these probably won't look correct until you open them in Photoshop either. Canvas number 13 is our material ID, which requires some extra setup in the surfaces tab for each object you want to use. Basically, you can set up a different material ID color for each surface in your scene to mask that out in post. Once you're happy with how your renders turned out, it's time to save the image along with all of the canvas files. When you hit the cancel button to end your render, notice by the progress bar that it starts to say it's saving canvases. It's important to note that at this point it's not actually writing any files to your hard drive, it's just splitting the canvases off of your current render. To actually write these files out, you need to complete the file saving dialog that's at the bottom of your render view. Once you give your render a name and tell it the location that you want to save the render, you can hit the save button and you'll notice that it starts saying saving canvases again. This is when it actually starts saving out the canvases in a format that you can use in stuff like Photoshop. For the longest time, I would save all of my renders by doing file save last render, but doing it this way won't actually save your canvases. So it's important to use the dialog at the bottom of your render view. From here, we're going to be moving on from iRay and start working with Octane. You're able to get all of the same sort of render information out of Octane, it's just called render passes instead of canvases. All of the setup for Octane's render passes are done inside of the render viewport. Much like the render view for iRay, you can find a menu off to the side. For Octane, it just happens to be on the right side. Near the bottom, there's a tab called render passes, which when clicked will open up an extra menu. If you scroll through this list, you can see that there's a whole lot of stuff for us to work with here. I'll only be going over a couple of these, but if you have the time, it might be worth going through and seeing which ones are useful to you. I'll start by turning on the diffuse pass, which is basically the same as the diffuse canvas that we did in iRay. You can see when I turn diffuse on that it added this extra button to the top of our render. Clicking on this will change the currently displayed render pass. If you want to get back to the default render, you just have to click this little back button on the top left. Next, I'm going to turn on the reflection pass, and you can see this adds yet another button to the top of our render. Each new render pass that you enable will add another button here. This makes it easy to flip back and forth between different types of render pass. You can see that the reflection pass looks very similar to our canvases for specular and glossy. They're doing the same thing, just in slightly different ways. Next, I'm going to enable the refraction pass, and you can see that this isolates the glass that we have on our lamps. This is one pass that I wasn't able to get out of iRay, but the nice thing about having Octane rendering inside of Daz Studio is that I can use the render passes together. Doing your base render in iRay and then creating render passes in Octane is definitely possible. I'm going to disable these render passes by clicking on them again, and I'm going to move down to some different ones. The geometric normal render pass renders similarly to the normal canvas in iRay, only it uses the geometric normal instead of the world space normal. I've used this in the past to render stuff like textures for billboards, but you can also do some cool lighting tricks in post with this. There's a few different types of normal mapping render passes here if you want to look for something that's slightly different. Next thing I'm going to use though is the Z-Depth Pass, which is similar to the depth canvas that we used in iRay. The Z-Depth Pass here has a slider which lets you dictate how far into the scene you want the depth to go. When we rendered out this pass in iRay, it rendered completely white, but this is just because the Z-Depth distance was too high. With Octane, we can change that using this slider instead of having to mess with the exposure in Photoshop. Usually, you want the Z-Depth to have as much of the range between black and white as possible. Something like this looks pretty good. 
Moving further down, we get to some cool stuff like wireframe and ambient occlusion. Using the wireframe render pass is a good way to give people an idea of what the geometry you're working with looks like. This way you can show off individual polygons or the way the topology is for things like promos. It looks pretty cool when you start superimposing this over your regular renders. You can give people some insight into the scene while also making something that looks pretty. The ambient occlusion pass will give you some really fast rendering distance based shadows. This is another good way for showing off your geometry for things like promos. It can also be really useful for things like billboards the same way the normal pass is. You can get some ambient occlusion baked into your textures. The ambient occlusion pass does take some time to render though because it has to calculate all of those shadows. The last render pass I want to show you is the object ID, which is very similar to the material ID pass that we did in iRay. The main difference here is that it works on an object basis instead of a material basis, but that means that you don't need to set up any of the materials to work properly. You basically end up with a single image that has a mask for every object in the scene, allowing you to do stuff like color correction on individual aspects. Once you've gone through and selected all of the render passes that you want in your Octane render, you can hit the save dialog box and find this option for export all render passes. It has a few different settings here for bit depth, but I usually use OpenEXR since it's the highest one. From here, you just find the location that you want to save all of your renders to, and then fill out the name and hit save. This will save out separate image files for your main render and each of the render passes that you have selected. Hopefully I was able to give you some insight into canvases and render passes and what they can do for you. They can be super useful for speeding things up and giving you more time to be creative. There's a lot of information out there about compositing and how to use these render passes for various things. So now that you know how to export them from Dad Studio, hopefully you'll be able to do something fun. Thank you for watching and happy rendering.